Welcome to Electors Online, and here's another topic in algebra. And this one is called solving absolute value inequalities. So we're dealing with inequalities here, but they have absolute value symbols in them. A part of it is within absolute values, which means that no matter if what's inside, inside absolute values is positive or negative, uh, you always get a positive value there. And that makes it a little bit more complicated to solve these inequalities. And there's actually a really special method in which you can do these types, but you have to recognize the two different types of problems you could run into. In one case, the absolute value symbol, whatever is inside of it, is smaller than some number. In the other case, whatever is within the absolute value symbol is larger than some number. And you can see that I've used the exact same expression. The only difference is that here it's less than and here it's more than. So, the way you solve this problem is as follows. When you see something like this that is less than, you then rewrite this equation that becomes the same as saying that everything falls between the positive and negative of this number, which means that negative 5 is less than the quantity within the absolute value symbol, which is 2x plus 7, which then is less than 5 right here. Now, Remember that if this, if this says less than or equal to, of course, you also have to include less than or equal to over here. But this cannot be written like that. In a case like that, the 2x plus 7 lies outside the 5 or the negative 5. So what you can do is this can then turn into two problems, like so, and the conditions both have to be met. You can say that 2x plus 7 is less than the negative of that number, minus 5, and you can say that 2x plus 7 must be greater than that number 5. So here you account for both possibilities when this number inside the absolute value signs is positive or negative, and of course that must both be true, so you use the union symbol, meaning both conditions must be satisfied. Alright, so that's how you deal with these. Now let me show you how to complete the problem. Well, the first thing you want to do here is you want to isolate x. That means you want to get rid of everything else. You want to get rid of the 7. That means you want to subtract 7 from the left, from the middle, and from the right side of the problem. And let me use a different color to illustrate that. So you want to rewrite this as minus 5, less than 2x plus 7, less than 5. And of course, you want to subtract a 7 from there, from there, and from there. That means everything is still the same, but notice when you do that here, the 7s disappear, and minus 5 minus 7 is minus 12, less than 2x, which is less than 5 minus 7, which is minus 2. The next thing you want to do is get rid of the 2, so you're going to divide everything by 2. So let me illustrate that in red. Divide that by 2, divide that by 2, divide that by 2, and now we get minus 12 divided by 2 is minus 6, less than x which is less than negative 1. So here it tells you that x must lie between negative 6 and negative 1, which can be illustrated graphically. If this is 0, and this is negative 1, and this is negative 6, notice that negative 6 and negative 1 are not included because it doesn't say less than or equal to, and everything in between, so we can darken that up with a solid line. And so this graphically illustrates we're looking for all values between negative 1 and negative 6. So this is how you do that when you have a case like that. Now over here you have to work those separately. You want to solve for x, so you're going to, in this case, you're going to subtract 7 from both sides, so let me write that, 2x plus 7, less than minus 5, so when you subtract negative 7 from both sides, negative 7, negative 7, like so, then we get 2x is less than minus 5 minus 7 is minus 12, and then you divide both sides by 2, and you can see that on the left side here, you get x is less than negative 6. And at the same time, this condition must be met. So we do the same thing over there. We write 2x plus 7 greater than 5. We want to subtract 7 from both sides, so minus 7, minus 7. So that becomes 2x is greater than minus 2. And then we divide both sides by 2. And that gives us x must be greater than negative 1, and so here we write x is greater than negative 1. So both of those conditions must be met at the same time. So we're looking for all values, where x is less than negative 6, so here's negative 6, here's negative 1, 
and there's zero. To give you a reference, we want x to be greater than negative one, so not include negative one and everything to the right. And everything to the left of negative six. So that means all values that are permissible to solve this equation, or this inequality, I should say, is x can be less than negative six and x can be greater than negative one. Of course, it can be both at the same time. I may have misspoken, but again, remember that either it's like this or like that. Both conditions satisfy the inequality. And that's how you solve a problem like that. All right, now that I've given you a good side-by-side -side comparison, let's do a couple more examples, maybe a little bit more challenging, to see how to solve these types of problems.